All right, well, praise the Lord. Good to see y'all here this evening. Those of us that are online, if you would stand if you can, we're going to start out by singing Mighty to Save with Alleluia, Alleluia.
feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is He. Praise him, praise him. Oh, sorry. Now you got to start over. <laughs> praise him, praise him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O oh, earth, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms, he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins he suffered and bled and died. Ye our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail him, hail him, Jesus the crucified. Sound his praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows. Love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong. And praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. 
And praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown Him, crown Him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. All right, you want, you want to do a pick of Him? All right, cool. Uh, anybody got a pick of Him this evening? Yes. 535, all right. 575, okay. 575, leaning on the everlasting arms, 575. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning on Jesus. Leaning on Jesus. Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus. Leaning on Jesus. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Anything Amen. else? Anything else? Another one? 750? Peace like a river, 750. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean, I've got love like an ocean in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain, I've got joy like a fountain in my soul. Amen, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jeremiah. Thanks, everyone, for being here tonight. Thank you for all those that are online. Thank you so much for turning in. You're going to have a little presentation tonight. I just can't wait to see, you know, that presentation. It's uh, going to be awesome. Uh, we're going to start off with some announcements. John, do you have any announcements to make? One, two, three. One, two. One, there two. you go. There you go. <laughs> Uh, let's see, uh, tomorrow evening is Men and Ladies Bible Study, and then uh, coming up uh, on the uh, hmm, 14th, is that Monday, 14th? Yes. School starts, so we need to be in prayer for 
especially for his people that get up early in the morning and are on the roads to uh, be careful of children. It's a desperate time now, so Amen. we have to be very Amen. careful. All right, All right. Uh, so we'll start off with uh, some... Oh, we have a members meeting, too, coming yeah, up. Yeah, members meeting. On the 14th. Next, after a.m. service. After a.m. service. Next, next Sunday. Sunday. Amen. I know we've been putting it off a little bit, but this Sunday will be the day. <laughs> so next is the uh, praises. Any praises? Yes. Got one over here. I'd like to praise God for everything that he's done for Annabelle and that Amen. she was able to move back home, be closer to us, and she is walking and getting around, and she is in church this morning praising God. That is great. Great to see you, Annabelle. I got a better praise for you. Turn around. God answers prayers, right? <laughs> yes, Any other praises? Amen. Mr. James. I, uh, I'd like to praise God for bringing us through the COVID and, uh, you know, we're doing good now. And it, and sometimes I may get down, but it's always good to pray. And uh, uh, it's always good to ask the Lord to show me the blessings. Because uh, whenever adversity strikes, if you ask the Lord to show you the blessings, sure enough, you're going to see the blessings. Right. I've seen it time and time again. And I, I've learned to say, ask that a lot, show me the blessings. So I can be happy about what's happened to me in my life and our lives. And uh, I just want to praise God for being there and picking us up whenever we fall down. Amen. Amen. Any other praises? Yes, we've got a couple more. Debbie. Debbie and Ron. The dinner on the grounds this afternoon. Oh, that, that potluck? Yes. They call it a potluck. Well, that potluck, I found my luck. You found it? I found them. All, 20, like. all 27 of them. Huh? There was a couple. And that chicken and dumplings. Oh, yeah. That was, that was, I got lucky on that one. Oh, yeah. And then my ch the chocolate pie. I got lucky again. <laughs> so, yeah. That was great. It was awesome. It was a good shoot. Good shoot. Good show. And a lot of food. Any other praises? Ron? Just want to praise God that our pastor's feeling better than he was able to come and preach this morning. Yes. And uh, we'll lift him up to you. Yes. And Miss Stephanie. I'm going to try to do this. <laughs> I would just like to praise you, Miss Terry, for getting our girl involved in this mission. And I just want to thank the Lord and thank the church for sending her. And most importantly, I want to thank God for keeping her safe and yes. bringing her back. Yes. Yes. Amen. Uh, Annabella. <laughs> I just want to th uh, thank you to all the prayer warriors and whoever doesn't think uh, prayer doesn't work, it works. I'm right here standing when I shouldn't be. So thank you all. Amen. 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 Praises, praises. We want to thank uh Maria for getting her, we want to thank Maria for taking care of Annabelle during her first surgery oh. and Joe and Cindy, Cindy. Yeah. taking over to help finish that process <laughs> I just wanted to thank the Lord for my husband he's not here he's at the fire station today but um, I wouldn't be able to go on these trips. I wouldn't be able to be a nurse practitioner. I wouldn't be able to do anything that I do without his support. And there's very few men that would allow their nurse practitioner wife that he saw suffer through and got poor with um, in Peace School to go on mission trips um, instead of, you know, bringing that NP salary home. And he's willing to let me go. And um, he's the, he really encourages me to put the Lord first. Um, and he's my biggest supporter. And I'm just really, really blessed uh, to have him. And he loves this church so much. And I'm just so grateful that God brought us here. And 
God is allowing um, us him to use his talents here and um, thank the Lord for this church for um, entrusting in, in me and in Maddie to represent our church and to serve the Lord in a distant country. We're just very blessed. Amen. Prayer request. Uh, now we go go to prayer requests, unless there's any more praises. I know we we do have to pray um, for our pastor, the, our shepherd. Um, I told him, you know, we've been going through a drought, right, with no rain and stuff. But I told him, Pastor, we're going through a drought without your preaching. Um, and I've really felt empty, so I'm I'm so thankful to God that He was able to come up this morning and preach, and praying for Stephanie as well, because she really needs our prayers also. Prayer request. Oh, another praise. Okay, James. No, I'd like to uh, pray for all of our uh, fellow brothers and sisters across America. You know, we're all going through hard times right now. And uh, I'd just like to ask God to uh, consider them and, and, and bless America in Amen. their name. Amen. Amen. On prayer request, uh, the pastor's wife, Stephanie, uh, she, uh, she had a job that was a bit very stressful to her. And uh, someone new came into the management and uh, the leader of the bank, and it, it just, it just, she was not comfortable, very stressful. She did end up quitting that job. So her prayer tonight is to, for her to find something, you know, that she, you know, around close, and something she would be comfortable with, less stress, and maybe a good Christian, you know, coworker she could find, you know. So her prayer goes for Stephanie find something. And Jeremiah, what do you have? Uh, I have two from uh, Miss Loopy Holder. Um, thankful for being able to spend some good quality time on vacation with my son and grandsons this weekend. And please play, pray for Robert, who has a pre-op appointment on Wednesday for shoulder surgery. That God would give him successful surgery coming up. Yes, yes. Prayer request. Any other prayer requests? Uh, a a, a per friend of mine called her my sister and her, and her husband, my brother, uh, asked for unspoken prayer okay. to uh, family situations that are going on, and she is praying that her son will be, be like the prodigal son and finally give up and come back home and accept and go come back to Jesus and... Uh, Get but that family through, back together. They're going yeah. through a lot of difficulties with him right now. They just want, ask him for a prayer through all this stress and stuff that they're going through. Okay, Ron. I'd like to continue to always pray for Ronnie Holman and whatever the doctor is deciding to do and open the doors for the treatment that he's going to have or whatever the Lord leads him. Also for Socorro, all of our shut-ins, and um, just to pray for her healing for them. Um, just let's always, always remember them. Yes. Yeah, Ronnie, let's uh, pray for Pat McCormick as she's having residual effects from these last tests and she's feeling a little bit better but she's not what she used to be yes it's got her down she's in some pain that this a lot of discomfort so yes anything else so john oh got one more yeah i'd uh, like to send a, have a prayer request for all the students going back to school all the mass shootings that they've had for the schools to have safety and more security and the people just don't do these things no more. And it's just right. really scary now when ki you send your kids to school and you don't know if they're going to come home alive. That's right. You think they're going to be safe, but it's evil world. Yeah. Maddie behind you. 
I would just like to um, pray for Miss Terry as she leaves this um, next weekend for her journey to Ukraine and pray for her safety and her health, that she comes back to us safe and healthy. Yes. I'd be nervous on that trip, but God will protect. That's where her prayer is. When does Miss Terry leave? When do you leave, Terry? The 13th. The 13th. 13th. Okay. If there's none other, John, would you mind praying for these? All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we have an opportunity gather together in your name lord we ask lord that you forgive us where we fail lord we know that you have grace and mercy on us lord and you ask us to uh, repent come forward to you lord and give our life lord we thank you that we can get that uh, forgiveness from you lord lord we heard all these prayer requests lord we have sickness we have shut-ins we have loved ones that are going through personal and financial issues lord and Lord, those that are traveling, Lord, and school coming up, Lord, we, there's a lot on our minds, Lord, but we know that you can handle them, Lord. But you ask us to be uh, diligent in praying and lifting them up to you, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we give all the honor and glory to you for what you will do and use us for any examples of your light, Lord. And Lord, may we have this week that we can uh, go and talk to somebody that might just need us to be there at the right time lord That's may right. we have eyes of vision of you lord and may we have a heart of, of mercy and lord that you can give us the word lord that you ask us to give to that particular individual lord we look forward to hearing from maddie this evening we thank you for her opportunity to go lord how you blessed her kept her safely lord and lord bringing her back lord and may she always be at the threshold of serving you lord and we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, if there's any others that we have missed, Lord, we turn them over to you. We have a lot of unspoken, Lord, people that have hurting in their hearts, Lord, but wish to keep it quiet, Lord. But you know which ones those are, so we ask that we just lift our hands, Lord, to you for those that are unspoken, Lord, and that you just take them upon yourself, Lord. And, Lord, we always give you the honor and the glory for what you do. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 You know, we have church service here, but we do have another opportunity, avenue, that we grow closer to the Lord and learn God's words, and that's Sunday school. I mean, it's a great uh, way of interacting and learning from others and sharing, you know, with others of how we deal with certain situations in our life. So it's a good way, like I said, to learn God's word and to grow with each other. And the classes we're in, I mean, everybody talked. I mean, it's just, it's awesome. I just love Sunday school. And we were in 1 Corinthians last week, and this week we're in 1 Timothy. And what it is is, uh, who is your neighbor? Now, who is your neighbor? People ask, who is your neighbor? Well, that's people in my home and my next door neighbor. No, the neighbor is everybody, everybody in the city, in the country, and around the world, okay? That's who our neighbor is. Our neighbor is everyone. And today was praying for your neighbor. I said, well, man, I don't like my neighbor. You know, Terry goes, man, I'm going to Ukraine. These are some, you know, I look at Ukraine and say, you know, they're battling Russia. These are some evil people. Well, we, they're our neighbors also, okay? Pray for them. Pray for them that God intervenes with those leaders to let them have a change of heart the way they try to take over Ukraine. So, you know, we pray for everyone, the good and the bad. Pray for them to make them grow spiritually. That's everyone. That's one of the things we need to be. And, uh, you know, love is in essential to every aspect of a Christian's life. It's all about love, isn't it? Okay, love your neighbor. But that's, that's how we're measured with. A Christian is not always measured. We may look at a Christian, a good Christian. We have our scale of how we measure how good a Christian is. Well, he knows a lot about the Bible. Well, the way we really need to measure a Christian is the love they have for each other. Okay? That's how we need to look. And how do we share that love? You know, we, like I said, we, there might be someone we may not be all that comfortable with. You know, somebody mentioned, you know, prayer requests for a family that's kind of having a little turmoil. Well, there's times, sometimes we just might have to just say, you know what? It's the time to pick up that phone and try to make amends. It's time to go over there and knock on the door to try to make amends. That's how we are, that's how we're measured. Because when we do that, people see that love from all of us and how we share that love, 
they'll look at that and say, you know what? That guy had courage to go knock on that door. And, they, you know, it took courage to, you know, to make amends. And I, I want to be like that in my life with others. So do that. So, like I said, it's all about love, thy neighbor. And talking about that love I mentioned last week, these two ladies, Terry Kimball and Maddie Breyer, you know, they have that medical profession they have is taking care of others, right? So they're using that. And they're using that not just to just take care of them, but they do it with love. And they don't care where they're going or who they have to take care of. I know Terry may have someone that comes in the emergency room, shot Somebody shot by robbing the bank, but they got to take care of that person and show love to do their best they can to take that care of that person. Isn't that right? You got to do it. So that's, that's true love. And you know what? When those things happen, when we take care of them, they might have a change of heart. You say, you know, so that's what you need to do. Reach out. Reach out to everyone. So with that, you know, Terry Kimball, she had an opportunity to share last week. There's no way we could get them both together. But, you know, so tonight it's Maddie's turn. And Maddie, I hope you're not too nervous, but man, we can't wait for you to get up here and share all your experience you had. And uh, welcome up. Yeah. All right. Hello, good okay well I first want to start off with thank you Miss Terry for connecting me to Rescue Hope and telling me all about it and then I also want to thank the church for sponsoring me and allowing me this opportunity to go and it really was a blessing to say the least and I came back with a whole new perspective not only about nursing but just about God I feel like I connected with him a lot more over there and I just have a lot that I took back with me so I'm very excited to show you everything that I got to experience over there so this was um, day one. So we had landed in Tor or Nero in Intibe, um the night before at about like 11:30 at night. And so this was our first day. And um, for this day, we uh, traveled about six hours to Toro, and this is where we went to the hospital, and um, we started setting everything up for our next two days of clinic. So on the top left picture, you can see where it says. Jesus is Lord on one of the buildings over there. And I thought that was just so awesome, so I wanted to take a picture of it because you don't see that over here in the U.S. where people are just proudly, like, you know, just worshiping God and have Jesus and God plastered everywhere. And even on the vehicles, it would say, um, like, God is so good and just everywhere. And I so, thought that was amazing. So I, I want to include that. And then on the bottom left picture, this is Lake Victoria. And this is the second largest lake in the world. And it looks more like an ocean to me. So it was really cool. So this is just stuff we, um, I saw as we were traveling. And then on the uh, very right over there is the hospital that we were at. And so on the left, you can see the actual hospital. And then on the right is the church that they built over there. <clears throat> and so how it worked is every morning before we start clinic, we would get, we got there about 7.30 in the morning and we would worship with all the people there was always kids there that basically lived there. And um, we would worship with them in the morning. It was so cool too because we started singing the songs. I thought they'd be, you know, um, different songs that I wouldn't know, but they all sang the same songs that we do here in the US, like God is great and everything, or how great is our God. And I was like, that is so cool that they know all that all the way over there on the other side of the world. Um, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, so I thought that was a really eye big eye opener to me. It shows how far God has traveled across the world and it was just amazing. And so you can go ahead and go to the next slide. And so this is our first day of clinic. So on the left here, these are um, two interpreters that were awesome. So um, I did triage on the first day. So we opened at eight and I was set up in that tent right there. And so we would have around like 50 to 100 people at a time come up to the chairs and wait. And um, my job was to get their name, um, what their chief complaint was, take their vital signs, and um, those interpreters are awesome. I wouldn't have been able to do without them. There we go. Um, but it was, what really opened my eyes this day was the fact that um, 
in the beginning, it was like pretty well paced because there was only a few people coming in at a time. But around like lunchtime, people started just swarming in, and they they had like pieces of paper with them that would show their name and um, their age and their weight. And they just started. You can tell they're getting nervous that they weren't going to get seen. So they kept like putting their papers like like closer to us, and they kept like cutting in front of everyone because I mean I couldn't blame them. They're just so worried that they weren't going to get seen this day. And so I thought that was pretty. Um, it was pretty sad, but. I felt, I felt better about it because we told them, you know, we'll be open again tomorrow so they could come back and see us. And then this is a picture of me and Miss Terry in the middle. So yeah, that was our second day. And I think we saw around like 700 people this day. So that was really cool. And then you can go to the next slide. And so this is our second day at the clinic. And this day was really awesome. I got to work under Miss Terry and um, this day, I got to, I was inside, so whenever the patients would come in, Ms. Terry would, you know, assess them and ask them um, what they were here for, and once we had um, their, their idea and their diagnosis, we got to pray with them after, which was really cool, and um, I thought that was amazing because you don't have time to do that here in the U.S., I and mean, it's very fast-paced, but over here, we got to just sit down, be in the moment, and, you know, just ask them to, like, um, we would ask them too if you know they were saved, if they knew Jesus, and over there they use a term, um, "Are you born again?" And so, like Miss Terry said last week, you just see the smile on their face, and you already knew if they were saved, and it was just amazing. So, we get to pray with them, and um, I love that part of it. That was my favorite part of the whole experience. And um, on the left here is a picture of me with um, one of the interpreter's babies, who was so precious, and then um, the next one is some of the kids that we saw that day that we got to treat. And then there's some more. And then on the bottom right, there's a picture of um, Miss Terry and I, and we were um, taking care of that one lady. But I thought that was just really amazing how not only do we get to treat them physically, this is where we got to treat them spiritually too, and just get to talk with them and get to know them. So I love that part of it. You can go to the next slide. So this was one of our safari days. So this day we um, drove, I think it was to Jinja this day. And this is the Nile River. So on the left, you can see there's like boats there. And then the center is the source of the Nile. So how it works is uh, we got on this boat and you go into the middle of the Nile River and there's this little shop in the middle of it in that middle picture. And um, I know what was really cool is like, they, like we, we pulled up to it and I was like, oh, this is cool to look at. They're like, no, you can get out. I was like, oh, we're getting out like in the middle of the river. And um, when we stood up, you could see the water looks like it's boiling. And uh, I was like, what is that? Like, it was so weird. And they said, that's like um, where 40% of the water of the Nile comes from. So it's an underground um, spring. So it bobbles up and feeds into the Nile, which is really cool. And then that uh, Lake Victoria I showed you, that uh, feeds 60% of the Nile. So I got to learn a little bit about that. So I learned about that in sixth grade. So actually getting to see it in real life was really cool. Um, and then the top right picture is a bridge that they built over the Nile. And then the bottom right picture is all of us on the boat tour. And it was really cool too, because the minute we got on the boat, we started um, going up the Nile River and you could see all these animals across the water. You could see the elephants, you could see the crocodiles. It was really cool. So that was a blessing to get to experience that, let alone, that was so cool. So you can go to the next one. And then this is our second safari day. This was um, to Murchison Falls. And um, this is the strongest um, waterfall in the world because it comes from the Nile River. So I think this is the Nile River is 40 kilometers wide. And then at this point, it goes down to eight kilometers wide. So it makes it really powerful. So that was really cool. And the water is, uh, was higher than it normally is. I, didn't get, I don't think I got in the picture, but to the right of that, they normally could walk up on the rocks and they could actually get closer to it. But this time, the water was pretty high, so we couldn't go on it. And then on the right is, um, this is where it feeds into the Nile. So the waterfall is to the right, and then this is where it goes, like it meets the Nile River. And I thought that was such a pretty view, so I got that picture of that, and that was really cool. So we can go to the next slide. So then this was um, another safari day. I think this was, some of these are on the way to Murchison. So on the top left is a baboon. The middle is an elephant, a giraffe, a warthog. Then the, the bottom middle one is a hippos, and those are really mean. <laughs> um, what was cool about that is that I learned that they can um, keep their head underwater for five minutes, so there's actually more hippos around than you, than you realize. And we had one, when we were in the boat, we were just looking around, 
And this one hippo was like bobbing its head, getting closer and closer to us. And so the guy was like, oh no, it's gonna attack us. So he like drove off and they're, they, yeah, they can swim really fast too. So you gotta watch out for them. And then on the bottom right picture, this was really cool, this experience. So that was a mama lion. And on this safari day, um, how it normally works is you're supposed to just stay on the dirt roads um, on the safari, which makes sense because they don't want you to you know, get on the land or disrupt the land or the animals. But the ranger knew that we were missionaries from the U.S., so they said, oh, well, there's a mama lion, the babies over here. And so he called our tour guide, and um, he led us to the mama lion with her babies over there. And so if he would have never done that, we would have never saw them. So I thought that was really cool, too. You can go to the next one. And then this is whenever we were traveling back to Entebbe. So that was another six hour drive because this was when we were preparing for our last clinic day with the other doctor. And in the top left picture is how they kind of grow their garden. So this one doesn't really show like it finished, but um, what they do is they like build these brick walls, almost looks like a maze. And so they have like little corners of it in there. And then that's where they grow their plants. And that's how they get their food, which is cool. And then in the top middle picture, uh, it was kind of sad. These guys were heading to the meat market, but I, I couldn't believe how long their um, longhorn was on the top left picture. So I thought that was cool. And then on the bottom left picture, um, this is what they use for mostly for transportation. They call it a moda moda over there, I'm pretty sure. And they can hold up to, like, I think Dr. Tomlinson said they ha like, saw seven people out at once and a goat on it. So whatever they can fit on it, they will put on there. So I thought that was awesome. Um, and then the bottom middle picture is their meat market over there. And so it was really big. And so that's where a lot of people, you know, go and get their food. And then the right picture is their pharmacy. So you can see kind of how small it is. And not and all the time it's stocked with medicine either. So that's why this hospital that they built was a blessing. Because it has not only the pharmacy, it has a laboratory, it has an OR. So this is like what their typical pharmacy would look like. You can go to the next slide. And then this is our third and last clinic day in, in, in Tebe. So this was Dr. Franklin's clinic. Um, so Dr. Tomlinson is the one that we went with and um, we worked at his clinic for two days. And then Dr. Franklin, he stays in Uganda and he's good friends with Dr. Tomlinson. And um, so we got to serve at his clinic too, which was really cool. And in the, on the left picture, that's me. I just pulled a tooth. That was something I did not expect. Um, on, the, on the way there in, um, into Entebbe, the doctor was talk, talking to his daughter, Sarah. He's like, yeah, I think the nursing students are going to go and help the dentist. So it's like, oh, that's cool. I'll just you know, clean the tools or something. They said, no, here's the medicine. Like, start pulling, pulling up the vials of medicine, and you're going to pull a tooth today. I was like, am I, though? I was like, I don't know if I'm ready for that. Um, but yeah, it was cool. I got to learn how they do that. They mix lidocaine and epinephrine. And then you pull it up in the syringe and you can take the syringe over there. And then like the dentist showed me like on the mouth model where all the nerves are, where you're supposed to inject someone. So I got to learn about that. And then um, I watched the dentist pull like two teeth and he's like, all right, here you go. Go ahead and pull it. I was like, oh, I guess I guess I will. And so that was that. I pulled like seven teeth by the time it was over that day. Yeah. Yeah. I came back as a dentist, I, <laughs> I guess. So that was pretty crazy. And then um, the top middle picture, that's all like the tools laid out. Those are the, all the, the syringes I pulled up. And um, then on the bottom, that's our whole team. So this whole team saw 1,650 people in three days, which was amazing to me. And then on the right is Miss Terry and I. So yeah, it's just looking at that picture, I think there's maybe, what would you say, 30 people on the team, 30, 35? So this goes to show how busy we were all three days, but it was just so much fun. I could have worked all week doing that. It was so much fun. So you can go to the next slide, and that's it. So does anyone have any questions? I don't know. Um, I'm planning on going back, though, one day. I would like to go back maybe next year, but I don't know how it's going to look with the nursing. So. We will see. I'm definitely going back one day, though. <laughs> did you have a question? It did. Um, that's what I was telling my parents when I got back was the biggest perspective change for me was seeing all these people, um, how happy they are all the time. And I never met one just rude person there. And you get back to the US, and everyone complains over the littlest things. And it's just crazy to me how people 
they're it's just amazing like they said if a child lives up to five years old that's amazing for them because they go through so many challenges like malaria or starvation and um they go through so many challenges but yet they're still so thankful for everything that they get they're so thankful to god to be alive every day just to wake up for them is truly a miracle and you come over back to the u.s and everyone has so many opportunities and so many blessings but yet they're just so ungrateful you know so it was funny too um when we first landed back in texas um we were waiting for my parents to pick me up and we saw this one security guard he was just rushing people like crazy and people were just like you know putting their bags up in the cars and he was just yelling at everyone rushing and miss terry said yep we're back in texas aren't we <laughs> I said you got that right because everything's so rushed over here it's not like that over there so it was a very big perspective change any other questions what do you think made the biggest impact on your life there? Um, I think getting to pray with the people, because that's when I got to hear their stories and got to know a little bit more about them. Because during triage, I was just, you know, my it was, um, I, was I had my medical hat on. I, was, I didn't have time to really get to talk with them. But when I got to work with Terry that day, um, I got to, you know, ask them, like, um, well, first we asked them if they were saved. And if they were, we said, okay, well, how can we help you? What can we pray, you, pray for you? And um, a lot of people just had... A lot of hard things like Miss Terry said last week that woman had lost she had four kids and she lost every single kid one year after the other so you just hear their problems and just makes you think you know maybe I don't have such bad problems compared to some of these people but praying with them was definitely my favorite part I felt like I got to know them a lot better uh, it was in Uganda Yes, it's uh, on the east, toward the east side of Africa. Yes, um, so Uganda is where the Nile River actually starts, which I didn't know that. So it starts in a city called Jinja, and then it goes all the way up to Egypt from there. How about the food? Oh, the food was amazing. Um, they have really good fruit there, so a lot of like the breakfast that they would serve us, it was a lot of pineapples, passion fruit, which I fell in love with. Their avocados are really good, too. And then they have a... Um, a food they're called chapati, which I never heard of. And it's kind of like a flour tortilla, except it's a little bit thicker. And it's made with the oil, right? And um, it's amazing. I could eat that like popcorn. It was so good. And then, let's see what else was there. Oh, samosas are really good. It's like, it's like a triangle shape. And they fill it with either vegetables or beef. And um, it's deep fried. And that was really cool. Do they have pizza, pizza shops? Pizza, pizza shops? No. No pizza shops, a lot of meats, a lot of like meat markets and stuff like that, like meat on the stick. And then like a lot of fruit stands everywhere. Yeah, their fruit was really good. Their avocado was good. I'm sorry? Did you have to be careful of what? Yes. Um, so like when we went to, went to restaurants, they told us not to order um, salads or something like that because the, the lettuce itself was fine, but they were worried about it. They rinsed it off with their water. It wasn't safe. Um, but like most places we ate, though, it was like normal restaurants you get here. It's got the same idea of restaurants in the U.S., so everything was cooked fine. But yeah, you just couldn't go by like on the street and buy random fruits and stuff. What was the, the main complaint that people were sickness that they had? Oh, main sickness. everyone said flu. And Miss Terry had told me about that, how for them everything is flu. So if, they have, if they're coughing or sneezing, it's probably just like some kind of viral thing or if they just have a common cold, everything's a flu. Or a lot of people would say my leg is paralyzed. And I was thinking to myself, how am I supposed to write this down, paralyzed? Because if you're walking here, your leg's not paralyzed. But um, I would just like put in quotations what they said. It was a lot of that, a lot of um, malaria too symptoms. So whenever I look at them, like the sclera of your eye, I could tell how yellow it was. So I already knew they had liver damage. It was probably from malaria. And a lot of them had um, like upset stomach, headaches, and stuff like that. And those are some of the signs of malaria, too. So that's when a lot of them would get malaria tests. Does children have a priority over adults? Um, not over there, they didn't. It was just it was based on symptoms. So like this one patient had come in, and um, when I was in triage, she looked really clammy, and she was really shaky. So we knew it was probably her sugar, so we had checked it. And I don't remember what it was, but it was super low. So it was just based on like symptoms. It wasn't whether they are a child or adult, just based on how they present. So like we knew that she was really sick, so we got her back. And I think they gave her glucose or something. And then another patient came in, 
I think you had on your slide that, that little girl that had malaria with the blood transfusion. I don't remember, I, don't, I didn't triage her, but she presented with really bad signs too. So she got, she got ahead of everyone and they tested her and sure enough, she had malaria and her red, count, her red blood count was really low. So they got her on a blood transfusion. Oh, so how it worked was um, our triage, I don't have any more, but um, our triage tent was in front of the hospital. So um, once we got them triaged, they would have to wait in a line, which was full of hundreds of people. But um, they have to wait in line, and then you'd go through the main entrance, and then you'd see one of, I think there were seven doctors treating people. So um, yeah, so as soon as they, we got them triaged, they would just wait in line, and they'd get to the doctor after that. Mm hmm. If you got any questions, uh, we'll put on the mic so people online can hear. Uh, you think this trip had any kind of impact on your plans for the future? Absolutely. Um, it's made me think about, I've always, I've always wanted to go on a medical mission trip, so now that I did, it makes me think more of after I get ner more nursing experience and work at a hospital for a few years, doing missionary work for sure. Um, I fell in love with it, to say the least. It was just amazing. It was amazing to get away from here, from the normal everyday life, and get to indulge in their culture and see everything over there. And I just got to, I learned and got to see firsthand how great the need is over there. Um, like Ms. Terry said, every, every time you leave, it's hard because you see all these other people out here that didn't get seen that day. Even though we saw them the next day, you just know that they're not getting the care that they need over there. So I just would love to go back and continue to make an impact on those people and get to help because the need is so great over there. They only have just this hospital in um, Tororo, which is Dr. Tomlinson's, and then they have um, Dr. Franklin's hospital in, in Tebe. And like Ms. Terry said, they only have two, was it two defibrillators in all of Kampala, which is their capital. So if someone has a heart attack, it's very, I mean, it's, they're set up for failure. They don't have the, the needs over there that they, that they need. They don't have the means to get places. They don't have the means to um, save people. Any other questions? <laughs> so um, yesterday I got a text from one of the doctors just checking on me, making sure I made it home okay and asking if I was still going to Ukraine. And um, uh, I asked him, um, is there anything that, I, I, I was able to get them, the doctors, the four doctors at the hospital, a, a stethoscope, a really nice one, and they were so excited about that. But they see a lot of kids, so they, um, I asked them if they had a pediatric one, and they said no. So I told him when I come back, I'm going to bring them a pediatric one. And he said what we really could use is a pediatric pulse ox. Um, they deliver babies all the time. And True. these sick babies come in all the time, and, and a pulse ox reading is very, very important to determine. A baby can't tell you that they're having shortness of breath or mm -hmm. how hard it is to breathe. It's very, very important. Um, and we just take that, that little piece of equipment that we can buy at Walgreens. You know, they cherish so much. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, we, we I'll, I always tell everybody, you're the, we are the ones that get blessed. Mm-hmm. They, they give so much more to us than we could ever give to them. And, um, you know, um, I know we don't all agree with Mother Teresa's doctrine, but I love her because she loved the poor and she took care of those that needed care. And she said that she could see Jesus in those little children. And every night after clinic, Dr. Tomlinson, when we'd have devotions, Dr. Tomlinson would ask us, uh, where did you see Jesus today? And every night, um, people would respond. It was in those children, those children's faces. <laughs> and a lot of them do go through a lot of hard times. But they're so loving and they're so giving. And um, it just makes you realize what is important. I... 
I'll admit that when I've gone to these trips in the past, it can be so overwhelming and you can concentrate on, oh, I can't ever leave here. I've got to stay here today. When they come pull me out at six in the evening, I'm, I'm saying, no, 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 no. <laughs> they're, they're, I'm fine and there's plenty mm -hmm. out there. But there will always be that many out there. They're there every day mm -hmm. and it never gets better. So we have to focus on the eternal. What are we giving them for eternity? Um, what was that little piece of equipment you referred to a while ago that helps them breathe? Pediatric pulse ox. It, it is a test to see how well a baby's breathing or how well we're breathing. Well, how much one does one of them cost? Not very much. And do you have a mailing address? Um, well, I, that's what I asked him. How could I get it there? And I, I, we have a contact person there in... Um, uh, close to the hospital that I'm going to be get I'm going to get them some uh, the doctors are, are, are they they operate completely different than us you know when, when we're in the states and we do triage we're ordering stuff urinalysis mm -hmm. check x-ray EKG CT scan all these different types of blood tests and we depend on those diagnostics to determine what's wrong with someone over there those doctors have to depend on their assessment skills on what they see because they don't have the other and um, so um, I just have such high respect for them and I, I love to ask them questions and they're very they're very um, kind to teach you mm -hmm. on how they treat uh, different things and how they see it but the simplest thing like malaria it just totally changes their life neurologically physically their bones their muscles um, their brain uh, and and it, it in here it can be cured with six dollars worth mm -hmm. of medicine and they don't even have access to that um, but you know God is still good and he they're they're overall they're fairly healthy they're pretty tough I mean I wouldn't want to arm wrestle any of those women <laughs> that carry their yeah. jugs over their head every day <laughs> Is, uh, it comes from mosquito bites. So how it works is a, a, when a mosquito bites you, I, I don't know like um, exactly how it works, but I know whenever it bites you, the little it causes parasites to start growing in your body. And so um, I know it starts off in your liver, so it damages your liver. Then eventually it goes to your red blood cells and causes them to, um, what's it called, hemolysis, whenever the red blood cells um, burst. And so that's what causes their red blood cells to drop. So um, that's what I saw a lot of was Pretty much, like, I would say, like, 70% of the people I saw, they had just very yellow eyes. So I knew automatically is that they have some kind of liver damage, if not caused by malaria. But like Ms. Terry said, that was the hardest thing to see was seeing these children that the, the mothers were telling me they'd been having this cough for six months. You go over to the ER. I mean, I mean, the U.S. healthcare system, it does cost a lot of money, but at least the ER here has to see you legally. We can't just say no to you. Over there, they don't have that. They don't have any access to that. So they're sick for months or years, some people, just like we saw so many um, tumors on people. Like I had a patient that I triaged and she um, explained to me that she's having really bad breast pain. And whenever I looked at it, um, you can see just how inflamed it was. And even it started going down her lymph nodes. I said, oh Lord, I said, I hope this woman doesn't have breast cancer. And sure enough, it was. So <clears throat> they don't, I don't know about oncology over there. I mean, um, the hospital that we were at, they do have an OR, so they could go in, you know, and try to remove a lot of the tumor, but they don't have the chemotherapy. They don't have oncology there like we do. So that was really hard to see. Just so a lot of simple things that we could treat over here. Like um, one dog, had, I mean one dog, one boy had a dog bite on his um, left ankle and it was so infected and it was covered in dirt and um, we ended up giving him wound care. And they put betadine on it and cleaned it. But it's just so sad to see these people have the simplest things that we could fix, but they don't have access to it over there. So I'm just very thankful that Dr. Thomason was able to build that clinic over there because I remember him telling me that I think a emergency C-section, his hospital only costs 90 US dollars. Compared to over here, he'd be paying hundreds of th thousands of dollars. So just, um, just knowing that he has that, at least over there, and people know that this clinic is here, and then the one in Entebbe is there. I mean, it's far, but at least it's two of beginning of what's, what's going to come over there. Because I know they're still talking about building five hospitals total in that area, one to be a teaching hospital, so more people have opportunity to learn medical and get training. So 
I thought that was um, hard to see, though. How many, uh, how many local uh, women or doctors were there that you worked with? Um, we had, well, Miss Terry and Dr. Thomas, and we had two. And then was it how many doctors? Four. So they had four hospital in the hospital. So we had. Yeah. So um, yeah, because we had like three different teams come together. So I would say it was like seven or eight doctors total, treating people. Oh, she has a question. Did you graduate nursing school already? No, ma'am, not yet. I graduate this next May. I'm gonna tell you, no matter where you go you're going to be a blessing to who you work for. Oh, thank you. Because you're going to have that right heart and uh, that love for people. Thank you. Love of God. And I just wanted to reiterate that. I was so proud of this girl. Um, I'm, she did a lot better on her first mission trip than I did on mine. She was just a trooper, um, just sweet and not, not a bad attitude at all. And um, what I was impressed was she was so independent. Um, we were in a different country. She took care of everything. She, she was fine, she, just like she had always done this. So she's very strong. And she wasn't bashful? No, she wasn't. <laughs> and they all loved her. They just thought she was so sweet. And, and the kids loved her. And they would come up to her, and um, she she was she just obviously showed the love of Jesus just wherever she went, and um, I was real real proud of her. God's wow. got a future for her. Well, thank you. It was amazing too to get work, to work under Miss Terry. I remember I think I met Miss Terry. Um, I want to say 2015 or 2016 at youth camp, and I remember um, riding in her in her van with her, and we were going around youth camp, and I remember her telling me about. Um, her dad and how he worked um, for NASA. And when we were at the airport, I said to myself, it's so crazy how this time flies by and how things change and how God introduces you to, pe to people and puts certain people in your life. Because I was just, it feels like I was just talking to our youth camp and now we're about to leave uh, for the other side of the world together to go on a medical, medical mission trip. I thought that was just really cool to get a perspective change about that. Anything else? Any other questions? All right, Maddie. Oh, got it. One thing I would like to say that may not mean anything, but it means something to me, is how you gave her her first stethoscope when yes. she graduated. You've and I brought it her. with me, too, and I used it. Yes, to me, cool. that was so special. Uh-huh. Any other questions? Well, thanks, Maddie. Uh, it's been awesome. Thank y'all. One of the things that uh, the gentleman asked is, how can I help? Get with Terry and Maddie and see if there's something you could do to this organization, help monetarily or getting equipment like you ask, you know. And of course, the number one thing is prayer, right? Pray for all these people that's going around the world helping people, you know, with all these diseases. So it was great that we actually had an opportunity to, uh, uh, you know, to, to send them. So it, it's, it's great. It's great. And uh, anything else before we close? Oh. So one of the things that Dr. Tomlinson said is that he wanted people to experience more love in that hospital than any hospital they will ever be in. And I, I believe that they felt that. Um, they would look at us with tears in their eyes and hug us, you know, just thank you, thank you, thank you. When we, when we would pray for them, you know, even when we would give them the medicine or whatever, they'd say thank you. But when we prayed for them, they would just grab us and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's just such a, it, it's just such a blessing. I can't even explain it. Like I said, prayer is powerful. And uh, that word, too, I was talking about earlier, love. Powerful word. Anything else before we close in prayer? All right. Lord, just thank you for this opportunity. We have these ladies that you use with their gift you gave them in the medical field, Lord, and uh, you bless them with that. And they're just so eager to get out and wherever you call them to go and wherever they need to go, let this church help support them in that need, Lord. And again, pray for their safety when in time 
for these ladies and people around the world that's doing these things. Pray for all their safety, Lord, and let them whatever medical devices they need or equipment, make it make it there for them. Make those needs be met, Lord, because it makes it a lot easier for doctors to do these diagnoses, you know, get their proper diagnosis. Because, you know, it's just, it's just so much out there that, you know, it's just hard to, to find out sometimes what it really ails them, especially the children. And it makes it tough. So these blood tests and oxygen tests and EKGs and all these things does matter, Lord. So help supply that to this to this missionary uh, team that they, you know, the equipment they need. Lord, just bless everyone online, Lord, that has, that's listened to this and, and everyone here, Lord, and just... Uh, you know, God, we just thank you for all the blessings you've given us here in this country, a country that we have that nobody else does. We are so blessed to have all these medical testing and equipment, Lord. And, you know, in Bibles, you know, a lot of countries don't even have Bibles, Lord. So thank you for bringing us up in this country that we're there. We're here for a reason, but we shouldn't be just sitting back and not doing anything. So let's, let's use our resources that we have to help others because, you know, like again, our, we're measured as a Christian by the love we have for others. We pray this in your holy precious name. Amen.